Hello and welcome to the Career Changers. Today I feel super excited to introduce our guest, Cooper Rust Bruce. Sorry, I didn't ask you. This is the Rust. You're right. Rust. You're totally right. <laughs> Founder of Artists for Africa and Artistic Director at Heart Center Kenya. In 2012, professional ballet dancer Cooper Rust traveled to Kibera Slam in Nairobi to volunteer as a dance instructor with Anos Africa. Kibera is considered to be the largest urban slums in Kenya and the third largest slum in the world. There are more than 100,000 children who live in conditions that are difficult for most of us in developed countries to imagine. Basic necessities such as clean water, sanitary facilities, and even a floor in most homes are luxuries. So profoundly moved by her experience in Kibera, Cooper returned to her home in Colombia, US, and founded Artists for Africa, a nonprofit organization to help support arts education in Kenya. Cooper returned to Nairobi soon thereafter and took up residence. Since then, she's been teaching full time and working tirelessly, tirelessly to give the most destitute children opportunities to discover the art. Today, we are going to discuss her career change, her career change in dance industry and uh, how she's been changing the world one step at a time. Hi, Cooper. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi, I'm, Hi. You. Hi. <laughs> I'm so excited. Well, you don't know, we don't, we haven't uh, talked before, but actually I'm really passionate about dance and ballet. So for me, um, I've seen the work you've been doing, and, uh, I'm, and I'm really honored to have you here. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm honored to be a part. Um, thank you for inviting me. So, uh, well, we start with uh, unusual questions for the career changes. That is, what was your dream job when you were a child? I um, am one of those really, really lucky people. I knew what I wanted to be when I was just a little tiny girl when I was about two or three years old, I wanted to be a ballerina and um, and I I never lost sight of that. So um, I started training when I yeah, when I was three and uh, I danced, um, you know, I, I took class last week. So <laughs> it's my whole life. It's uh, it's never stopped. But um, yeah, I, I and but yeah, I've just always I've always ballet's been in my heart from the beginning. So you never had any other job apart dancing? Well, as it goes with dance, um, there were times in my career where um, I didn't quite make enough just dancing. So I did, you know, uh, typical jobs like, um, oh, well, my first job when I was 15, I worked in a dance supply store when I was in high school. <laughs> I fit point shoes. But then uh, in my late teens and 20s, um, I did things like um, food service. I was a server. And um, I even, in, in, when I, I danced for Nevada Ballet Theater in Las Vegas, when I was out there, I even shined shoes on the weekends to be able oh. to uh, cover my rent. But um, yeah, there, we always end up doing odd jobs as artists to try to, to make ends meet. Um, so I did a bunch of that stuff. And then I got into teaching uh, in my mid 20s. and. Uh, and started doing that also while I was still dancing. So um, <clears throat> can you share your career journey as a dancer? How did you start and how did you progress? Sure, um, I started, so I started uh, like so many Americans at least and many people um, in the West. I, I went to see the Nutcracker with my family when I was very small and um, immediately I was like, oh, I, that's what I wanna do with my life. And when you're two and you tell your parents that they're like, Okay, <laughs> sure, but um, I was serious. And um, then I trained and trained um, in South Carolina until I was about 12 uh, or even 11. And then I started going away for six, eight weeks in the summer and training uh, in New York and training in Connecticut and training in Florida and different parts of the States. Then I went away to school for high school to train full time. Then, um, then when I was 18, I got my first job as a professional ballet dancer with Nevada Ballet Theater. And um, I, my, fortunately, very fortunately, my parents were quite insistent that I still got a degree. So it took me about seven years. But um, at night, I went to school. And then the off season, I went to school and um, I got a degree in European history or in history with an emphasis um, on the Enlightenment and the 1800s in Europe. And 
Um, then I got a second degree um, in dance performance, a, a Bachelor of Fine Arts, just um, through that same university, through the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, while, all while I was dancing there. And um, then I, I switched companies. And that's time that I first traveled to Kenya. And I was just gonna come and it's cause I graduated from college. So I thought I've got a couple weeks off from dance, from work. And um, so I, I, I wanted to travel and I thought I could go and teach English and math. Um, but when I got here, um, that's when I started teaching dance. I, I mean, it just, it was natural. I looked up where I could take class to stay in shape myself, but um, there wasn't really anything. Um, so, um, but I found an after school program that had already started teaching arts to children and uh, different forms of art. And um, I got involved with the ballet side of it and then kept coming back every year to do the summer and then uh, just couldn't leave anymore. Just wanted to mm -hmm. stay. So yeah, um, let's take a step back and uh, let's go back to your career as a dancer. Um, was there a specific time where you started thinking about uh, leaving uh, your career as a dancer and thinking what I'm gonna do next or I cannot do this for uh, much longer? Well, so for me, it was a little bit different than other dancers because I was only 27 um, when I started coming to Kenya. I um, never had planned on leaving. Even, I mean, it's funny. I had a, I was dancing still um, when I came here the last time um, when I was 27 and I, I thought I was just coming for, for six weeks and then I just never went back home. <laughs> Well, I mean, I've gone home for Christmas and things, but, um, but yeah, no, I, so it wasn't planned. And, but what, what the feeling that I had was when I started really feeling like this is where I was meant to be, I had so many friends who were a bit older in their late thirties or early forties who were having to transition and didn't know what to do. And I was like, I, I could do this for 10 more years, but I already found my transition take take that take the moment and i've still had some really great shows since then like it's not the same as dancing full time but even just in at the end of 2019 i went back to the states and uh did a guesting at carolina ballet doing sugar plum uh in the nutcracker with my old partner bo busby who had danced for boston and we danced together and here in kenya i've danced quite a bit for um for groups of of families and children who'd never seen a professional ballet dancer before. So it's it's amazing dancing in cities where people know ballet, but it's also been really incredible to perform here where, you know, people act like I'm Margot Fontaine or something, which I'm <laughs> obviously not. <laughs> um, but uh, so it's, you know, but so I, 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 I even performed, the last time I performed was this past Christmas at the US Embassy at a big uh, event, uh, their Christmas party, uh, they needed, they, they requested it. And so I'm like, now I, now I am in my uh, mid thirties and like, I don't know if you want to see this, but I still get to <laughs> sometimes. I'm sure you're amazing. <laughs> Um, so in 2012, you traveled to Kibera Slam in Nairobi, uh, Kenya to volunteer as a dance instructor with Anos Africa. What took you there? <laughs> Well, kind of like I said, um, I, I really just intended to come here and teach English and math. That was the plan. But then when I got here, uh, my first inclination was to try to find ballet class for myself to take. Um, that's kind of what, for, you know, what professional, we take class, that's for our whole lives. That's what we do. Um, but then I, um, there was nowhere to take class. So, but I found Anos online and, um, excuse me, and I called Anna um, Nye and B Gilbert, who are the um, founders, and uh, B's the founder, and uh, Anna was the head of ballet um, in the UK. It was like, I'm here, I'm a ballet dancer, can I help? And they were immediately like, yes, please. Um, the guy who's teaching ballet, who is one of my dearest friends on earth, even to this day, Mike, was an African dancer. Like, uh, I mean, I like an African man who was also an African, traditional African dancer. And he was teaching the ballet and he was so welcoming and warm to the idea of a professional ballet dancer coming in and um, guest teaching and helping him a bit. 
and um, he's still doing his work. Um, he works for, he's created a new organization, but um, yeah, no, uh, it was, it, it was just by chance that I did this. And then the second I started teaching dance in Kibera, it's like, it's like Kenya infected me. And I just saw how talented these people are here and, and how many of the little, like the little people, they just wanted to dance. Like they're, they're, they're with all the problems that they must face and that we all know that they face, like they were just so excited to do ballet. And it reminded me of how I used to, I mean, and I, I mean, how I still feel about ballet, but to see these people who it's not even part of their culture, just open it like well, welcome it with open arms it was really powerful mm. so how has been that the impact of that experience on in your life i guess pretty big because then you decided to to go <laughs> home and then to go back <laughs> um it is my whole life now um my life is so different when i first went home i was i was living in california at the time and i uh dancing for state street ballet in santa santa barbara and um i sold all my stuff and i gave most of it away i had i was i just didn't want any more stuff anymore and i i it's changed my whole perspective on uh just i didn't i didn't need it anymore i even now i i'm good with maybe three pairs of shoes a pair of you know sandals a pair of tennis shoes and maybe for opening night i still have a pair of heels in case i need to give a speech <laughs> and <laughs> You know, and then I then I'm good to go where I used to have so much stuff, and yeah, it just it, so it changed it changed my life quite literally. And I moved to a new continent, and I have 14 children now that live with me. And I mean, so that but then just and also internally, it changed what was important. And uh, yeah, now what's important to me is is sharing ballet. I used and I also used to think it was sharing ballet with an audience, but now it's sharing it with the with the new country. So thanks to your work, we can say that you're actually changing the world one step at a time. Uh, Trying. <laughs> well, it sounds big, but I think it's right. <laughs> Today, thanks to Artists for Africa and Dance Center Kenya, you are giving many unprivileged children the opportunity to discover the arts and specifically ballet. How is ballet changing these children's lives? Oh, wow. Um, I mean, it is, it's giving them purpose. It's giving me purpose. It's inspiring them to dream and be big from i mean and again there's the the obvious people that whose lives it's changed uh joel kyoko went from coinda slum another small slum here in, in nairobi much smaller than kabira to the english national ballet school in london for four years and now he's dancing with joffrey ballet in chicago um another one of my kids francis Waweru, also trained uh for the last six years with me and decided instead of becoming a professional ballet dancer to take his dream and turn it into um going into production for theater and he's doing lighting design at cameron university in oklahoma and he's a he's a sophomore now he's in his second year um the, all of my kids have passports and visas to the us and go and train so but that's all very like uh measurable but what it does to their spirits is not measurable. And the, when even a little girl who's seven years old, who's never gotten to make a choice in her life, she takes math, she takes English, she takes Kiswahili, she takes CRE, Christian Religious Education, she takes a set of classes. But in uh, Artists for Africa's program, she got to pick between ballet or visual art or drama. And when those little tiny kids look at you and they say like, oh, I'm an actor. Oh, I'm a dancer. Like, it's a sense of, and you're like, I get nervous about calling myself a ballerina and I've been doing this forever. I don't know if I've just, I earned the title yet. And this little seven-year-old child will look at you and say like, oh, I'm a ballerina. And you're like, yes, you are. Get it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, it's it's immeasurable, the impact that uh, that this project's going to have, I think. So I have to look at your website uh, and I've seen that there are different programs that are offered um, through um, Artists for Africa. 
So can you talk us a little bit about these different programs? Sure. Um, we have the big arts program that serves about a thousand children in Nairobi. And that's that, like what I was just speaking about that uh, they, that we um, take locals under schools um, in, in uh, settlements like Kabira. And um, the kids get to pick if they want to take traditional African dance, uh, music, ballet, uh, drama, or visual arts. And um, most of those kids are in classes that have about 80 to 110 people. And it's like in a fourth grade class, um, which is really hard for us um, in the West to imagine. Like when we think class size is like 28 students, that's a big class, but here 90 students is quite normal. So when they come into Artists for Africa's program, we only have 25 children per class. So at least for that one hour a week, they have an art class where their teacher knows their name and where they're, you know, and where they have some choice. And I think that, I mean, and they look something to look forward to. Then, um, so that's one program and that's one program that I'm really proud of. And um, out of that program with with the ballet because of my studio here and because of my background i'm able to pull out the most talented students and offer them scholarships to dance center kenya so um the so we we've had dozens of children come out of there and then come and take two or three days a week at dck and then out of those children there have been some incredibly ridiculously talented kids that I just couldn't um, leave there in the situation. So I started, so we started a boarding house, um, which is this house, the one that I'm in right now. And um, there are um, 14 kids that have been brought into the boarding house. Um, three are gone now. Uh, Joel's in Chicago, Francis is in, uh, Francis in Oklahoma. Um, Pamela is studying uh, in the Carolinas. Um, and uh, Lavender, my uh, the next one to, to go, is uh, probably headed to London in September. So um, next September. Uh, so yeah, so then there's these 14 kids that live in the boarding house and they train six days a week. They get scholarships to go to the internet, some of the best schools in Nairobi International Schools. And we have sponsors for them that, uh, that help educate them on a, on a, on a Western standard, which um, Part of the biggest problem for me with getting close to these kids is that corporal punishment is still a real problem here in Kenya. So kids are still getting beaten in school. And so we've moved these guys to schools where that's not an issue and where they have access to computers and they each have a laptop and they, they're they learning the way that uh, I wish every child on earth had the uh, chance to learn. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, and then I think they're, many of them are gonna have professional careers in dance, but they have the option to study whatever they want. They can use their dance to become lighting designers or uh, Elsie, uh, another one of the older girls is looking at physical therapy. She loves ballet and, and now she wants to become a physical therapist. So yeah, you know, it's uh, but th those are kind of our main pro programs. Well, it's a lot. <laughs> and yeah. in all of these, what are the biggest challenges of giving access to ballet to children in Kenya? Oh, so many. Um, some of the, one of the most difficult things was explaining even to, so Dance Center Kenya, my, my job, my studio, uh, it's a, a for-profit business, uh, DCK, um, is explaining to parents that you have to do ballet four or five days a week to really master it. Um, that is a very foreign concept. And I think this is hard around the world, but it's exceptionally hard here to say like, yeah, when they get out of school, instead of doing homework for four or five hours, they need to get their homework done quickly. And then they need to come into class and they need to be there every day. And that means on the weekends, we have rehearsals and there's performances late at night. And then they're going to want to travel in summer to go to training programs. And then um, one of my one of my paying students, Nifo Mondi, just has gone to North Carolina School of the Arts and uh, for 10th grade. And yeah, telling her parents, like, she's really good she's got to go she's gonna leave you <laughs> i think that's the it's hard to understand how serious and but really for any athletes like professional athletes you have to commit and i think that's shocking to the culture here trying to explain like how serious and then um 
On the other spectrum with the less privileged uh, groups, uh, just funding and equipment and food and all that stuff that you need, like you can't train four hours a day without having the food you need to fuel your body and the uh, studios and the bars and the mirrors. So that's, that's at the other end. So um, what is today your typical day like? Um, so you have a typical I, day. I have very typical day. I have the most boring life. Uh, <laughs> I get up. Um, I, I usually get up at about 5.30 um, because of the, so the 11 kids that are still here, I wake up and make, I make 11 breakfasts and 10 packed lunches for school. Um, Elsie doesn't, uh, has graduated now, so she's here during the day. And um, then I go and teach uh, usually a private lesson uh, first thing in the morning um, before um, one lucky student goes to class. Then um, I spend the middle of the day teaching Pilates and things like that to adults to try to help cover costs for the studio while kids are in school. And then do a bunch, try to do a couple hours of administrative work at the studio. Um, we have a staff of, uh, for Artists for Africa has 10 employed teachers and Dance Center Kenya now um, in our seventh year has uh, about 23 employees, some consultants and some full-time international and here. So I try to do some management and then from four o'clock in the afternoon till 8.30, I teach dance and then I come home and we do homework and um, eat dinner and go to bed and do it again the next day. And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sometimes do an interview. <laughs> yeah, it sounds a lot of work. <laughs> what about the weekend? Yeah. Do you have, do you do anything different in the weekend? Yeah, it's different because on Saturdays I teach from eight to six straight through. I just teach because everybody's off. And on Sunday, Sunday's my favorite day because um, we do all of our rehearsals for our shows. And in the last year and a half, we haven't had any shows. So I, I taught more private lessons and did more. I got to hang out with my kids a bit more. But um, we actually have Nutcracker auditions this Sunday for the first time in two years. So we'll be back in the studio rehearsing on Sundays. And for me, um, Ballet is amazing. I love technique and everything, but it's the performances that we kind of live for as artists. So I love Sundays. Sunday's rehearsal day. Do you have any interesting or funny stories to share with us about your experience? Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, have, I have so many interesting uh, experiences. Um, so that maybe not so funny. Uh, some of them are uh, difficult. I remember um, a, 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 an experience that I'll never forget. When I first came here, I was trying. I brought all these donated leotards and tights, and I was thinking, like, "Oh, the kids are going to love this. This is going to be great." Going into Kabira, we've got leotards and tights for everybody. It's we're going to have our uniforms, and um, people in Kenya are quite modest, and. I started asking the girls, you know, we'll just go separately in a, in a back room. It's all girls. It's no problem. And um, one little girl just started crying. What? What's going on? And uh, it took a few minutes to figure out, but it turned out that her her underwear were in such bad shape that she was embarrassed to get undressed in front of the other girls there. And this is like a seven year old little girl who didn't, who just, and, and I remember, this was one of the first weeks I was here, just thinking I was walking in to be this hero. And instead I just humiliated a little kid. And it, that was a moment, it was a very interesting moment because it just reminded me that you're not always a hero. Like you need to do a little bit of research and understand. But then um, I called home crying and w within 10 minutes, uh, my mom had gotten on the phone with friends and there were three suitcases of underwear at my parents' house ready to come to Kenya for the next trip. And um, we were able to like help with that. And that's kind of what every experience has been like here. It's like uh, the kids are getting beaten at school. I really hate that. 
I really can't live with that. And then somebody will write a check for $5,000 to send one of the kids to an international private school so that they don't have to experience that anymore. So I've had lot, lots of interesting experiences like that where it's just really bad. So many people have stepped up. So, um, yeah, sometimes <laughs> you're freezing. Um, <laughs> So if we if we look specifically at the dance industry, do you think the dancers are well, are well equipped or supported to change their careers? I think that dancers who do not think about anything else will not be well supported um, and will not be ready to, to switch careers. I am so this is way off of topic of Africa. I am so grateful that I grew up in a house with a dad who my dad's an entrepreneur. He's a business owner. And he used to talk to me about that kind of stuff. When I opened my own studio here, had I never heard about taxes, had I never heard about even small business loans and investors and shareholding. And I grew up hearing all of these kinds of things. And I am so grateful that while all I ever wanted to do was ballet, 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 like you have to do something else. So the earlier dancers start, and I'm glad my, this idea that you have to pick between getting an education or being a ballet dancer, like you don't, do it slow, don't be embarrassed, take a class here, take a class there, slowly, slowly, slowly. And then maybe you're 27, maybe you're 37, maybe you're 45, but you've been working on it because yeah, there aren't, there isn't a huge support for art. We don't have a huge support as artists in our careers we're all we're all poor <laughs> and we're all struggling and but but i think it, i think we have to do a better job of of preparing ourselves because um there's so much exciting stuff to do after it's hard and it's painful and it, god when i go to see a ballet i i was i just went and saw don q a couple of years ago in bordeaux and i cried through the whole thing I, it was horrible i mean it was amazing they were beautiful and i just was like oh my life what are but but I, but then when I left, I'm still satisfied with what I'm doing, and I, I think that's that's that that's what a lot of dancers don't have after they, after they retire, whether it's through injury or age or choice, they're they just weren't prepared, and and yeah, no, I don't think there are enough organizations or enough people to help. I, I think we got to do it ourselves a little bit. Mm. So after you left uh, your career as a dancer, it seems that uh, you find you found your path to self-realization by moving to Kenya. Um, so what type of advice would you give to anyone uh, um, that is uh, trying to find that their, 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 they're moving towards their self-realization? Um, I would say be brave. Um, and bold and um when I, when i when i first came to kenya my 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 mom got pretty upset with me because i put my flight on a credit card because i didn't have any money and it was a great decision like generally i'm not a fan of credit card debt but it was the best decision i ever made sometimes you got to take a leap of faith and sometimes it doesn't work out you know like i i i've i was going to become a big pilates teacher that was one idea that i had and and I really, I do love Pilates and I'm glad I'm certified, but that's not my passion. I, you gotta try different things until, I love history, I studied history, but that didn't turn into anything more than my schooling. And you know, you gotta, you gotta find, be brave enough to try different things. And if something doesn't work out the first time, it doesn't mean it's the only thing. And <clears throat> yeah, no, I, I think that's the main thing is just being brave and, and going for it. and doing it along and along. Uh, what advice would you give uh, specifically to dancers looking to change their career? Sometimes it's not even a choice, you know, it's just something that is gonna happen quite early in life. <laughs> well, I would love for them to call me. If they wanna come to oh. Kenya, they can come. <laughs> That's and, amazing. Uh, yeah, come for a couple weeks, come for a couple months, um, come share your knowledge. I think that that would also, like it really helped me I didn't come to get paid. I came for, I came because I just wanted to volunteer and take the time to, to ex 
explore and and, and just go and reach out to people. I, I, I mean, you, I, like we just talked a couple of emails and I'm happy to talk to anybody. And I think there's so many other people like that. Like be, be brave. Um, try it. You know, maybe, maybe there's somebody out there who, who wants to write about dance, but they're too nervous. We'll do it. Just go to see a show, write a review, see how it goes. Like, Whatever it is that your dream might be, try it. And then if it doesn't work out, try a different one. I think it's really hard for us as dancers, though, because we've had this one dream since we were so little that no other dream seems like it's going to work. But um, but you can find a dream. And I mean, you can find a dream that has to do with dance or you can find a dream that doesn't. I have another really good friend, um, Keith Mearns, who used to dance for... Um, Pennsylvania Ballet. He's a botanist now. He went a totally different direction. Like you, you, you have, you know, you just have uh, so there's, and of course there's a million beautiful ballet teachers that come out of professional dance, but there's photographers and journalists and botanists and philanthropists and business people. And yeah, you just have to be brave enough to know that your life isn't over. It's just a small piece of your life. And yeah, it was a piece that you prepared for, for a long time. And it'll always be in your heart, but you just gotta, you gotta try something else. Yeah, I guess it's a lot to do also with finding, identifying their transferable skills uh, earlier on uh, before changing career and say, what are really my passion? What else do I like? And what skills can I use? Um, and sometimes maybe, um, I guess many dancers don't have the tools to do that. Um, so, Really now the last questions. Uh, if you could give yourself a piece of advice, what would you say to your younger self? I think I would tell myself to enjoy it, the, the career a little bit more. Um, stop worrying about if you're first cast or second cast, if you're performing in a matinee or opening night, if, uh, you know, I, I miss so much just taking class in the morning and with the live pianist and when your job was to not worry about anybody else, you just worry about your body, you just move. And instead of worrying about how high this girl's leg was or how many pirouettes that guy did, just live in the moment because it's fleeting and it's the best time of your life and it'll be gone. And and yeah, if you spent the whole time wishing you were doing a better part, wishing you were doing more turns, wishing, wishing, like, don't just enjoy what you got because it's awesome. Being a ballet dancer is the greatest career in the world. And yeah, don't squander it, wishing it was something it's not. Well, thank you so much, Cooper, for joining us today. And if anyone um, wants to get in touch with you or want to discover more about your work, where they can find you? Um, easily check out either of the websites, um, Artists for Af or A for A, A, the number four A, USA.org, um, or dancecenter.co.ke. Um, so that's Dance Center Kenya, dancecenter.co.ke. Um, or I'm on Facebook, Cooper Rust. I, I think I'm the only Cooper Rust, but. Um, yeah, I'm pretty easy to find. Um, I'm on Instagram, but I don't really know how to do it. I need help with that. I'm like living in the dark <laughs> ages on Facebook. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty easy to find. It's not hard to find me I, on LinkedIn. Um, yeah, so uh, just reach out and Dance Center Kenya is online. Artists for Africa is also on Facebook and Insta and all that stuff. So yeah, just anyway, get in touch. And I would, I love when people come. We've had so many incredible guest teachers come from Europe, come from Asia, come from America, come from Australia. People, when they come here, they're changed forever. So if, yeah, if anybody's brave and bold and wants to come even just for a week, we, we welcome them. So maybe I will come too then. <laughs> come on. I'd love to have you. Well, thank you so much. And thank you for sharing your very inspirational story. <laughs> oh, thank, thanks for, uh, for taking the time and I'm, I'm glad it worked out. 
<laughs> Thank you. And the last message to our listeners, don't forget, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and tune in next week for a new inspirational episode of The Career Changes. Thank you, Cooper. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Bye.